Hi, this is Dan Newman from DanNewmanWriter.com. In this video, I'm going to tell you about one of my side hustles. Uh, it's being a freelance writer. So strap in and I'll show you what this is all about. This is what it looks like to be a freelance writer. In front of me, I have a lap desk with a Chromebook on it, my cell phone, and a fine Moleskine notebook and a Pilot G2. These are the tools of the trade for a freelance writer. So how this works is I made contact with an editor and we talked a little bit to see what I can offer them and what they can offer me. And we came to an agreement, decided on, on an assignment. So after we decide on, a, on an assignment, it's all up to me. It's my job to make all contact, do everything, write the piece, get the art, get the cut lines, all that stuff. And I'm to deliver that to the editor. And after that, I get paid. That's pretty much how freelance writing works. The reason it's easy for me to break into this and just go grab assignments is because I've been in this game for 15 years. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cold calling someone I've never met and it's going to be fun. So what I have is notes up here, just dumb shit notes like who I'm calling, who I'm calling for, how I got the number, just, you know, the specifics that I don't really want to forget in the middle of a call because, I mean, I'm human, we all do that. You got to make sure you're kind of on point for this stuff because, you know, you don't want to come off looking like a dank or a twerp or someone who's weak. Here we go. Have a good day. Bye. And that happens sometimes. You make the cold call, do all the contacts and everything, and then there's not a story there yet for whatever reason. And I mean, this guy's justified. He has a good reason to not want to do the story yet. So then you just sort of scrap everything you did and go back to the drawing board. So what I'll do now is I'll hit up the editor and I'll, you know, tell him, you know, this one was kind of a bust. So what I'll do is I'll look for the next one. This is going to be my first piece for this publication. So that's just how it goes. You know, you have to just dig in and see because when you work with a place, you maintain a relationship. You get a, a, you get to know your editor. You get to be like, all right, so this person's a little bit kooky, so this one will be okay. Or this one's really stern, so this one's definitely not going to be okay. You have to find that little gray area where you two meet, you know, and then you know what kind of content to deliver there and what kind of things to pitch there. I hit up my editor, let that person know what's going on. I, to my editor, I sent a message. It just says, talk to you, blah, blah. It was a bust. You know, he said, he gave the reasoning, which I think is sound. And then uh, that's it. So from here, we'll start another discussion of story ideas I'll pitch to her, and then she'll pitch to me, and then we'll find the next thing for me to, to work on. And that's how it works with every single editor I work with. Because this really is how this stuff works. You know, and like, you can't be bummed when a story falls through like that. Because that just means there's 25 billion other things out there that I could write about. Let's walk away, get something new. So the editor just got back to me. So let's see what's going to happen here. Nothing. Um, just on to the next one. The thing with, with writing and freelancing is there's no days off, you know, and there's no days where there's no stories. So if I wanted to put the work in, I could still find a story today. 
in the reply, I mentioned that I'd, you know, talk to people, sort of put my ear to the street and see what I can find. And I'm also open to any ideas that the editor has. A little more back and forth with the editor. Um, had an idea that I had know nothing about. I have no baseline. I don't even know what the business is. So I said, sure, I'll look into it. Because that's what this is all about. It's about getting new things and just stuff. It's about learning. It's about people and seeing what people do. You know, I have a lunch plan that normally ends up in some decent leads. So, yeah, onto the hunt. This is what it looks like. Quick, quick update on the freelancing thing. The first idea was a bust. It didn't happen. So my, the editor got a hold of me and pitched me a story. And sounds like a good, valid story. So I'm on it. What I did today is I made initial contact. And after that initial contact, um, I got a, a, I, I talked to someone else, the, an assistant for the company, because the main person is off today. So they're getting a hold of me tomorrow for an actual, like, a more informational, uh, a more informational phone call. And off of that phone call, and with any luck, they have a press kit, um, I'll be able to write my piece. I talked to the subject and I got the information I need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write the article and I want to get it submitted before the morning so the editor has it ready so in case they want any changes or there's any other little fires I need to fight with this thing. There often is. A lot of times you'll submit a piece and the editor will be like, I like the idea but the rest sucks. Get rid of it. So it's just something you have to deal with. And this is my first time working with a new editor. So there's always going to be a little bit of growing pains with that. It's just part of the territory and it's what you have to deal with. There's nothing wrong with it. It just happens. So I'm going to get on with this and I'll check back with you in a little bit. Okay, the article is finished. I wrote it. I did a redraft and then two edits before I sent it. The article has been submitted. Now it's out of my hands and into the editor's hands. So tomorrow when I wake up, I'll hit up my email right away and I'll find out if the editor wants any changes made or has any questions about the facts in, in the story or whatever. It's a waiting game. There's every possibility I could wake up and it's already published. So, I'll tell you then. Okay, last night I said that there's a chance I could wake up and the piece would already be published. Uh, that happened. <laughs> so, I woke up and my article was up, posted, and fully edited and everything for two hours by the time I woke up. And it's a very popular piece. It's been liked and shared all over social media. So, that's a good feeling. <laughs> There's no way around it. That feels great. I got an email from the editor. It said pretty much, it, she called my piece perfect. And 
She wants a bill so we can get the payment part of this over with and we can get right on to the next piece of work. Now it's uncommon for an editor to call your piece perfect. I'll tell you that right now. Um, it won't happen on your first time out, so don't expect that. It's You will be let down if you expect that. This happened because I have been published a lot. I've been published all over the place. I've worked with dozens of editors. I know the game. And with this specific piece, the reason that happened is it's pretty simple. It's because I did the legwork. You won't get anything in life without doing the work. What I did to prepare myself for this is before I wrote the piece, I read a lot of the other works that were published by this company. I figured out the writing style and the word count that was going to yield these results. The writing style was reverse pyramid, it's called. It's a journalistic style and I'm adept in it. I know how to do it and I'm good at it. And the word count, I nailed that because I looked at other articles by other freelancers that were published on similar topics. I found their word count and I got a guideline, you know, it should be between this many and this many words. And I submitted enough words to fit the piece with no fluff. So what happens next, aside from, you know, the next assignment, what I'm going to do, and this is a very, very important step for any time you get published by a new editor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the submitted copy next to the published work and I'm going to compare. I'm going to look for what changes the editor made to my copy and I'm going to use that information to tailor my next piece to be as good of a fit. That makes the editor like you a little more because they realize that you're seeing what kind of style they want and you care enough to actually go through with you know, making those changes to your copy. The other thing that happened is now I have a current piece that I could take to other editors to show them clips of my work so I could start another ongoing relationship with another publication. And you can do this as much as you want as a freelancer. You are your own boss. I mean, you're, you're submitting a product that will be edited before it is printed, but you're your own boss, you know? I can work for as many or as few publications as I want. There's a lot of people who do this for a full-time living. I hope my video has given you an understanding of what it takes to become a freelance writer. And I hope that my video will help you along your journey. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and get writing.